Hello friends, I am dressed up today in some ridiculous amounts of finery because I am finally filming a video uh, that I've wanted to do for a while now. And it's a little frivolous and it's a little self-indulgent, but that's okay. We're gonna have fun with it and I'm gonna get to talk about my stuff, which as you know, I love. And I have to share that I am channeling my late grandmother right now. I have referred to her in my blog posts and wherever else I write as MAGA. So whenever you hear me talk about MAGA, that is my late grandmother. Um, in 2014 or 2015, on New Year's Day, I went over to visit her and she was wearing like every piece of jewelry that she owned. And I said, well, Maga, what's, what's this all about? She said, you know, Sarah, I have all of this jewelry that I never wear. So I'm just gonna wear all of it all the time now. And I don't think she ended up doing that for the remainder of her life, was, which was to be like another two or three years. But every now and then I think about that and I get a little bit inspired. So typically I do these videos and I have them scripted out and they're usually a lot of voiceover because while I'm not a perfectionist per se, I don't think I am. I think I'm a little bit too whatever man to be a perfectionist, but I do hate that I might sound stupid. Um, but I think that's what this video is just going to be. It's it's not going to be perfect in it by any stretch of the imagination. And I'm going to stumble and I'm going to pause and um and uh and whatever. And that's just going to have to be okay. Otherwise, this little video will never get made. So it's it's just going to be me rambling at you about my jewelry. And I think what we'll do is just start by, you know, looking at what's in the room and how I have it arranged, which is to say it is not arranged at all. But I do have several little spots where the jewelry lives. It's funny, for most of my life, I have been more into silver jewelry. And then, like, I hit my mid-40s. And then all of a sudden, all I want to wear is gold. And people, I'm sure you already know this, but I didn't. Gold is really freaking expensive, so I don't have a lot of it. These are two of my favorite necklaces. This is by Atelier Narce. And you know what? I'll probably link to all of these places in the comments. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, and this is from Pura. I think that's how you pronounce it. They have a lot of jewelry inspired by myth and legends and sigils and talismans. And there's a lot of wax seal jewelry, I guess you could say. These are several rings from Catbird NYC. You know, these look, these tiny rings, they're so expensive, but you know what? What else am I really spending my money on? So that's fine. And I have my trusty little tentacle earrings. These are the earrings I used to wear when I traveled. I would never get on a plane without these earrings. I thought they were sort of a a talisman for me and then some little nightshade berries from Alexis Berger who does beautiful glass jewelry and we'll see more of her stuff in a bit and then a gorgeous strand of beads from Eternal Craft Designs I think this is from her um, her poison collection and it's just really, really shimmery and sparkly and beautiful and all of the reasons I love jewelry. Here we have some more treasures. There's several pieces from my dear friend Flannery Grace Good. Some of them are custom, like this one right here. I don't know if I can focus on it. I think we made this when I was feeling a little bit deceived, I think, by someone's character. And it was a stone to really, I think, help me see to the heart of things. 
This is another strand of beads from Alexis Berger. Some earrings. I forget actually who made these earrings. Oh, these swords are from Vanessa Mooney. I don't actually wear them all that often because they poke me, but I do like looking at them. Then we have several strands of the blood milk ritual strand beads. which is also one of the pieces that I am wearing. I think this was my grandmother's, although I, I'm not sure. I don't know where on earth I, I could have gotten this from. And then on my hand here, which I broke two fingers off of it, I'm trying to artfully arrange it so you don't notice, but I just told you, so now obviously you know. We've got some blood milk rings. I did have a much larger collection, but I had pieces that were also much larger and my hands are just too small and I, I couldn't carry them off well and they were also a little uncomfortable to wear. And there's some gorgeous dusty pieces in here and I'm not a very good collector. I, I appreciate my pieces so much and I love to admire their beauty but you know I never recall what the names of any of these pieces. If you have a question about any of these, please, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll try to find out for you. But I, I don't actually remember what any of them are called. Then I have the little Dutcher of Bell here. And I bought this in person in Philadelphia. It's always nice to be able to meet the creators of these beautiful pieces and uh, I didn't actually have more to that thought. It's nice to meet the creators and get to know them. So I had to pause because my sister drove into town. She lives about an hour away and uh, she stopped by so that I could give her a Christmas gift and I told her what I was doing and uh, as she left she said okay I'll let you get back to your one-man Hamlet which is a line from one of our favorite movies. And if you know, you know. I hate to be the person who says that, but I really wanna know who knows that. You can leave me a comment about that too. I should note that we were over at a friend's house last night and we may have had a little bit too much to drink. And <laughs> she said something that, you know how when you're a little bit tipsified, something is so hilarious in that moment and, but the next day, this is still pretty funny. I forget what we were talking about. She said, I was much skinnier at my mother's Catholic funeral. And I don't know why that struck me as so hilarious, but I'm also going to steal it because I have an unpublished book. It's also an unwritten book. It's just an idea for a book. And it's called, I was told there would be casserole. And it's going to be memoirs and essays about grief and loss and fucked up families and food and I feel like I was much skinnier at my mother's Catholic funeral really deserves its own chapter in the book. Okay so back to the jewelry. So I think we were getting ready to look at this velvet lined coffin pen board and I feel terrible I forget the name of the um the creatives who made this as well, but I'll look it up and I'll leave it uh, a link in the comments. I feel really bad, especially because I wrote a whole ass profile on them a couple years ago. I should remember, but I've got a terrible memory, okay? This is a recently acquired piece. I love it. It's very big, but somehow I'm much better with large necklaces than I am with rings. This is a long time favorite. And, you know, speaking of favorites, I think what I'll do is after this little tour, I'll just lay out a few of my favorite pieces. And we can talk about the jewelers and where you can find them and get a closer look. I've been trying to be careful not to let you see my floor in the meantime, but we are carpetless for the time being. And it's like we're living in a warehouse and it's been this way since summer of 2020, and we still haven't put in actual flooring. So 
So let's look in the jewelry cupboard. This is not arranged in any way and everything is just sort of layered on top of each other. This is a weird post-mortem gift from my mother. She died right before Christmas. And this was in a gift wrapped box. And there was no tag on it and we don't know who it was supposed to be for, but I mean, this had to have been for me, right? So I claimed it. Then we've got all of my earrings, which I don't wear as often as I should. And that's because I'm on the phone all day long for my day job. And I'm using like, you know, a handheld receiver. So that smashed up against your ear with earrings in it is just always so very uncomfortable. This is a piece from Alexis Berger. It's, I think, knotted or crocheted cord with glass beads in it and I love it so much for I guess it's color and it reminds me of the the jewelry boxes I always envisioned as a child that were just sort of dripping with gorgeous jewels or like the illustrations I saw in um, a story of Aladdin where the genie had lured Aladdin into the cave and there was just this whole orchard of trees dripping with ruby apples and topaz pears. And so colored glass beads always remind me of things like that. Here are some more rings. Some of these don't fit me anymore because I purchased them when my fingers were a lot skinnier. I have little hands, but my fingers are a little bit Jimmy Dean sausage link like. And down here, there's a bunch of brooches that I have because I just think they're beautiful. But when am I ever going to wear something like this? Or why would I wear it? If you wear brooches, let me know how you style them or where you pin them or just how you make them work. So that is my setup and it's not especially elegant, but I guess it does the job. I wasn't certain of the best way to do this. So just like everything else I do, I thought I'd go in with no plan and sort it out later. Let's move from left to right, I suppose. This is a beautiful hand embroidered necklace from Moonflesh. This is the piece of jewelry that started it all for me. This came out of my grandmother's jewelry box and I used to obsess over it when I was maybe four years old. Here are some of my favorite pieces from Blood Milk. I wear this labyrinth necklace quite a lot. The key, I love it because it's so small and delicate and it hangs close to my throat. I wouldn't say I wear this one very often, but I sure love to look at it. This I wear quite often because it reminds me well, it reminds me of the jewelry I loved when I was little, just huge beaded necklaces. This 
is a broken bit of earring. This is the first blood milk piece I ever purchased. And I think it was from their Etsy shop, maybe in 2010, maybe earlier. I'm not sure about it, uh, but it broke and I lost the other earring. I kept it though as a, a remembrance, I suppose. Then we have some blood milk rings. Again, I, I like the smaller, more delicate pieces now. They just work better with my hands. Here are those beads from Eternal Craft Designs again. I just love all of these venomous greens together. It's such a great combination. There's a few rings from Arcana Obscura. There's a scarab that I love to wear. I love its heft on my finger. It feels really nice. And then a little scully guy with a broken front tooth. I love him too. I have quite a few pieces from Flannery Grace Good that I love. This ring was the first piece that I ever commissioned from her. And it's got this crazy little moth lady on the back that I love so much. Isn't she gorgeous? I don't know what kind of stone this is. Maybe agate of some sort. It reminds me, I don't know, like of, of a woodland scene, bare trees, and maybe that's a pond, and there's a reflection of the trees in the pond. I just love looking at it. And there's this beautiful moon dripping with whatever those stones are. I'm not going to pretend like I know. This is another piece that reminds me of something I loved in my childhood, although I can't remember what. Then of course her iconic cicada rings. And this was a little commission, this little jelly bean of a stone, sort of a reminder to be good to myself and to love myself. And it was a, just a really sweet piece that we collaborated on. This is a pair of really wonderful earrings from uh, Goldsmith or Silversmith or Jewelry Smith, Holly Babasuthi. They're not heavy at all. They look like they might be, but they are not. And they're just gorgeous. And another pair of earrings, these cute little mushrooms from Thieth. Thieth, Teeth. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I'll leave the link as with everything else in the descriptions. My Alexis Burger pieces that I love. There's these beads again and these lurid, veiny eyeball earrings, which I just love so much. I love beautiful jewelry, but I also have a bit of a contrarian streak. So I like things that border on a bit grotesque too, but that are still so uh, just gorgeous. And uh, that's exactly what these guys are. And there's a pair of Tarina Tarantino earrings that my best good friend got me one year. And some under the pyramid necklaces, a little rune, and then a satyr square. I wear these things when I want to feel extra magical. And my midlife crisis gold jewelry. This one is so gorgeous. Um, sorry, there's a shadow here, but it is just such a beautiful piece. I got this to congratulate myself for finishing this first draft of my second book, which if you hadn't heard me mention it a million times already, is going to be due out this fall of 2022. So really, this was just a let me show you my stuff kind of video. I didn't make as many videos for my slow little channel this year, and I wanted to squeak one in before the year ended, and I thought this might be an easy way to do it. I'm not going to do any of this with voiceover, which, as I might have mentioned, is so much more easy for me because I get to write it out, and I'm a much better writer than I am speaker. So that's just 
makes me less anxious, but I'm not going to do that this time. You're just going to get a whole video full of me rambling. I hope you're okay with that. And I hope you'll check out some of these jewelers. They do such incredible work. I would have loved to have done this video in, say, mid-October and put this up for November so that folks could maybe become acquainted with jewelers they hadn't known of before. Not that I think I'm imparting any great knowledge to you. I don't know that any of these... any of these artisans are all that obscure or hard to find, but you know, just... um to point some eyeballs their way for Christmas sales and whatnot. But of course I'm doing this, I don't know, five days before Christmas and everybody's shipping cutoff dates are past. But maybe this will give you some ideas for your jewelry collection or for gifts in the new year. I don't know about you, but I don't make many resolutions anymore. I think this year, with all of the beautiful pieces I have, I might not wear all of them, all the time, every day, like my grandmother suggested <laughs> might be a good idea. But I am going to try and wear a single piece that doesn't get a lot of love maybe, or that's tucked away and I don't often see. Oh, there's my closet, you guys don't need to see that. I just wear my jewelry more often. Wear a single piece every day. I invite you to do the same, or maybe you already do, in which case you could inspire me to do this or keep me accountable. And let's talk about the jewelry we're going to wear this year, that we're going to gift this year, and how beautiful we're all going to be this upcoming year. It's been a weird, stupid couple of years, and I don't want to go into 2022 thinking that it's going to be exactly like that again. So let's make it beautiful however we can. And you know, if that means wearing every single piece of jewelry you have all at once, even, even for New Year's Day, that's not such a bad idea, right? Anyway, thanks as always for indulging me and for stopping by and some, spending some time with my ridiculousness. And if you have any video ideas for me in the upcoming year, I'd love to hear about them. This little channel is never going to be my top priority. I just like to have a little piece of social media everywhere and I have to update it, I don't know, maybe once a month, but I really don't know what to do with it or what to talk about. And sometimes I think people on the outside looking in, I'm not saying they know your business better than you do, but maybe I talk about things that interest you that I just would never think to expound upon, I suppose. So if there's anything that you'd like to hear more about from me or you'd like to see me do, I'll them in the comments. And, and thanks as always for stopping by, for paying attention to me, even for a few minutes. I hope to see you again next year. And till later, weirdos. Okay, now how do I get all of these off? Damn it.